Can I help you? Do you always sleep with an empty glass and a loaded gun, Mr. Edward? It's just part of the job, is all. One of many parts, I'm sure. Well, with strangers, barge. I didn't barge in, I knocked. But you mustn't have heard me. So I took the liberty of letting myself in, but that's all in the past now, and I'm a firm believer in living in the present, and presently, I'm attempting to fix this business of us being strangers. You are Mr. Edward, no? I am. Mr. Edward, I was told to come to this office by a mutual acquaintance. I was told that you were a certain kind of man. A man who helps people. Some people. Well, I'm some people, Mr. Edward. Do you think you can help me? Maybe. I wouldn't dare touch the stuff.
But since you've already poured me a glass, and I am your guest, I believe that my manners dictate that I should not be rude, rather than not be drunk. And I should hate to be rude. Well, I'd offer you coffee, but uh, booze is a little easier to come by with the ration office and all. Yes, I know all about the ration office, Mr. Edward. So what can I help you with, Mrs. Snow. And who said anything about Mrs.? Must a woman be married, Mr. Edward? No, not at all. I should hope not. I have no intention of soliciting some backward-thinking Neanderthal. It's a new world, after all. It always is. And you can keep those big words in your pocket, Miss Snow. Or your purse. But I'm sure you meant no harm. It's just my work. Four times out of five, it's a hen looking for her wayward rooster, if you get my meaning. The other one? That's usually something bad. Something big and quiet. From the cops. From the neighbors. From whoever. You know what I mean. Yes, I should think I do. Mr. Edward, what do you know about wires? I know there's a guy down the block that'll fix your radio for a nickel. No, my radio works just fine, Mr. Edward. Wires in the sense of tapping, wire tapping. Enough. Well, that's not very descriptive, Mr. Edward. Enough to get by or enough to hear every conversation between this smutty city and New York. You see, I need a man who knows wires. What for? Because I'm just dying to know the latest gossip. Listen, lady. Snow. Lady. If you want me to talk to you about the fact that I may or may not know how to wiretap a building, so that you can listen to the mice eating dinner. I'll need to know something about what you'll be listening to. Roosters and hens, Mr. Edward. What exactly do you need? Well... First I need to be topped off. Second... I need you to wiretap a particularly uninteresting hen house without the birds ever knowing it. So uninteresting. Why are you so interested? That's right. Uninteresting to anyone who isn't me. And me? And you. You know, this isn't easy or cheap. No, I should think it wouldn't be. So tap some unimportant house? For no reason, huh? Damn the costs. You know the woman he's hanging around with. Why don't you just confront her? Save yourself a hell of a lot of money. Even if you don't care about it.
You are a very clever man, Mr. Edward. Just be careful you don't talk yourself out of a job. You know, the better you are at telling the truth, the better I'll be at fixing your problem. You know where your husband is and where his little hen is. What good's a wire gonna do you? It's too dangerous. Too expensive. Not to mention illegal. And I'd hate to see a little thing like you get in trouble. What age is this bourbon? I have no idea. I'd say it's a bit young, wouldn't you? Sometimes you like younger whiskey. And sometimes you need to know when to put a cork in it. Well, maybe you're right. But you should still take my advice, considering I'm doing you a favor. Oh, please. That hardly call getting paid for work some terrific favor. The fact is, I'd love to do it myself, but I don't know where they are. What good's a wire gonna do if you don't know where they are? I have an address. That you couldn't find? That I wouldn't find. Not alone, at least. I've never met a man more disinterested in getting paid. Oh, I'm interested in getting paid, sweetheart. I'm just not crazy about the idea of going to jail for sapping some stranger's house on some confused dame's hunch. Do yourself a favor, just confront him. But I haven't seen him. Since when? Since he left for the war. Listen, I know he's here. I know he's somewhere with someone who isn't me. And I need help. So either you're going to help me with this little clandestine endeavor, or I'm going to finish your cheap bourbon, walk out of this grotesque little office, and dig up some other wartime fossil who's hung over from the service regiment. Among other things. And you're sure? Completely. All right. So, we tap the mistress's house, find the sneaky son of a bitch that ran out on you. It'll be hard getting in, no one's around, run the lines out to our cables, getting out so nobody sees nothing. And I'm sure it will be, but I believe in your chances. As you should. And why should I exactly? You came to me, Miss Snow. Yes. Yes, Mr. Edward. Now that I believe I have your interest in this project, I think that it's only fair that I inquire as to how you procured the skills necessary for a job like this. They're quite particular. Taking your words simply won't be enough. It's what I did in the service. Intelligence gathering. Transmissions, decodings. Big ears and light feet. Shit like this was my specialty part of my language. Just replaced the adultery with bomb targets, the wandering Joes with Nazis. I was good too. I was a major. I could have had my guys listen to the FDR if I wanted them to. Good. Good, that's very good. And to tell you the truth, sweetheart, I might have just done that on occasion. 
Sounds like you're just the man I've been looking for. Yes, ma'am. You've come to the right place. It sounds like you're privy to much more interesting information than just roosters and hens. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, Miss Snow. The things you can learn just by running some cables and listening closely. Very valuable things, I'm sure. Miss Snow? Well then, with all of this experience and knowledge, you surely came across a man by the name of Rollins. What did you say? Lieutenant Franklin Rollins. Surely a soldier of your stature, a major, and with all of these cables, is that what you called them? Yes, with all of these cables and all of that valuable information, you surely came across a First Lieutenant Rollins. In fact, I'm sure of it. You see, I'm his sister. You're not here for a husband. No. No, I'm not. That was a bit of an act. Frank never told you I want to be in the pictures. <laughs> Mr. Edward. I'm here on behalf of my brother. You see, he, like you, was very handy with wires. But you already knew that. You also know that he didn't profit so directly from them, like you. How the hell? And I already know what you did to him when you found out that he was going to have you court-martialed for selling our secrets to the Nazis. You see, he was just as good as you with all that technical But instead of listening to things that he wasn't supposed to, he sent things. I guess they were secret little messages that only I could receive. There's no way. Indeed, there is. So much so, I know all about your activities and how many boys died because of them. Like Frank. Would you like to know what was in his last message to me? It said that if he disappeared, it was because of a particularly wretched man. His direct major, in fact. A man with your name and your talents from this city. I told him not to get involved. And he told you to stop selling our military secrets for whore money. You see, Mr. Edward, we all hear things. We're all privy to secrets from time to time, like my secret tonight. It's what you do with those secrets that counts. How did he send those wires? You know, I, with all that army secrecy jazz, I got messages from Frank pretty often. Until I didn't. Until we got a visit from old Johnny Uniform saying that my brother, my own goddamn brother, killed himself in the barracks. Couldn't handle the stresses of war. even after the war ended. <laughs>